Hi there and welcome to the art studio again today. So I will be doing 12 different paintings on a very small clipboard as you can see here. So the space that will be covered will be about 5 inches by 5 inches and each of the 12 clipboards that I do will have a unique painting. So stay tuned and see what we do with these. Alright so I've taken the little clipboards and I've taped them off with some masking tape covering most of the back and giving myself a clean edge here. So this will be five inches by five inches, which will only need about an ounce to an ounce and a half of paint. So I'm mixing my paints with the flow mix. You'll All see right, the recipe. So with this one, I'm going to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to just do a, um, what's called a ribbon pour. So I'm just going to pour some various colors across the, this canvas. And all of these have been mixed with the flow mix. You've seen the recipe and you'll see it at the end of my video also. And they're all mixed so that they have a little bit of a, um, you can see a little bit of a puddle disappears quickly. And so what I do is I just move it around my canvas. There we go. And with this one, I'm going to take my fork through it. Oh, I love that. All right, I like that better. All right, so as you can see, the paintings are dry. I have added some vinyl stickers. I do have a silhouette. It's kind of like a Cricut machine that cuts out some letters. And these are some of the logos that they use at this particular establishment that I'm making these clipboards for. And so I've mixed up some clear resin to go over top. And I'm using some Cast and Craft, which is opaque pigments. And um, I will make a little bit of waves on this one uh, when I'm done. And I have ready, I have an ABC tray. If I have extra resin, I always try to make a couple of the uh, keychains or whatever. So, all right, so we're just gonna add a layer. And I always say my general rule of thumb when covering something is about one fourth 
of the size. Now this one is a little bit, that one's a little bit much. That one's just about right. And then I come back. I like to spread it out with my fingers. Some people spread it out with a stick or a comb or a jagged edge um, like you would a countertop. I like to feel where the vinyl, or where the, I like to feel where the coverage is. So that's always why I like to do it with my fingers. All right, so I'm not gonna put as much on this last one just in case I have too much that I need to spill over. And making sure my white is mixed up. And here we go. So I'm going to move this around over top of this one because I know there's a little bit much on this one and it will spill over. Now you never want to make your layer of resin too thin. That will cause little dimples in it. And you see I have it elevated over a cup. That way it can run over the sides just as much as it wants to and the back is taped so I'm not worried about that well actually that looks pretty good it drip just a little bit off just a little bit beautiful all right and I'm going to come back with a heat gun and Make sure that I go over this because resin will have bubbles in it. That's beautiful. All right, same with this one. I'm going to do it over top of the one that has a little bit less. adding waves to this one. So what I do is I usually just kind of drip just a little bit here and there. And sometimes I pick a place where there would be natural waves out in the ocean. And I just add some waves. Sometimes a second layer. Now, if you hear some strange sounds, there's construction going on next door, so. All right, so let's. All right, and then what I'll do is I'll take the heat gun and move that around a little bit. So if you watch as I'm doing this, you'll see the white spread and it'll look like the sprays of some waves. And sometimes I'll come back with another layer of that in a little bit after it cures some more. It'll make more white spots. So that's how you make your wave. All right, so this one is ready. So we're going to go ahead and take this off. Going to take the tape off of it. Now, what I usually do is I will take an X-Acto knife or a box cutter I'll find the seam where my paper tape ends and I'm going to make a straight line right there. And here we go. I'm a little sticky, so we'll see how that goes. There we go. Went a little crooked on that. We'll see if that works. So next I like to 
peel it down. Let me close that. I don't want to accidentally cut myself. And it'll come right off. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. So next I want to take the tape off the back. You see some, I have some spillover of some of my resin there too. And this will magically pull it off too. So there you go. So relatively clean back, a little bit of spillover. And then the next thing I do is I take a sticker that is my shop information, put it on the back. They can remove it if they want, but if they leave it on, I have sprayed it with some acrylic clear spray so that it will stay for a little while as they sanitize things. And then I will actually hand write my shop information right there in a paint marker. So how do you think that turned out? I have to clean this side up a little bit, but how do you think that turned out? It's beautiful. Thanks for watching.